Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is yet another Macintosh Classic. But instead of the two, it's just a regular Macintosh Classic. Now, the only reason why I grabbed this one is because I only have one Macintosh Classic machine. And it works fine. And I've used it in previous videos. But the reason why I got this one is because the... the bucket is in much better shape it's not yellowed it doesn't have sticker residue all over the place no scuffing or anything like that but one thing this thing does have is it's got marks all over this thing because you cannot use metal tools on taking these apart now i do not know the condition of this i don't know what's been done to it or any of that we are missing the screws on the bottom of it it looks like Yep, we are. Other than that, it has your basic complementary of parts. Now, my goal is to make one good classic out of the two. Um, and then probably adopt out or sell off, etc. the spare machine. Because I don't need two classics. Much like I don't need six SEs, which I have right now. So I'm going to start getting rid of some of this stuff and paring things down. Um, but in the meantime... We have this one, and if anything, it makes a good video, right? So that's kind of why I do this stuff, is to make videos. So, all right, let's get this guy apart, because it needs to be taken apart. Um, yeah. Serial number Q. Oh, Q. Star Trek Q, John Delancey, right? Anyways. At least it has these screws. Oh, that one's a bit stained, but that's not a big deal. So, because I don't have that screw, will not stay magnetized. Neither will that one. Nope. Alright, we're going to have to do this the hard way. Alright, again, i got to have both hands in order to uh, take this thing apart because the bar or the top is going to be very, very tight. So let's crack this guy apart. There. So what I do is I open it the bottom and I take this plastic tool and I get it in here and work my way up until it pops off. Using this will prevent what happened here from the previous owner. And uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. So... Otherwise, you'll just mark the crap out of the case, of course. All right, so what do we have in here? Mm, it's in fairly good condition. Okay, so this has the older flyback, unfortunately. So this is an early run classic. So we have that going for us. So let's move that out of the way bucket out of the way let's take a peek at what we got going on here of course no surprise there we're missing the hard drive it's like i can't ever get these with hard drives anymore well it looks original the caps are original the flyback does not have that glue on it that turns to crap so that's a good thing yeah core's not loose all right um let's see what's the motherboard uh it's got the original caps on it uh, yeah all right well we're also missing the memory expansion thing so that's a problem because these things only have one megabyte on board i think someone made reproductions of those but don't quote me on that. Uh, we're missing the SCSI cable. We're missing a lot of things. This thing is basically bare bones, run of the mill, crappy classic. But hey, there's a lot of good parts in here. Let's see what we got for a motherboard. Oh boy. Let's defuse the situation. That's original. 
There's a reason why I never played basketball. Beep. Yeah. That's original. Throw that in the trash. Diffuse that situation. Okay, yeah, this has all the original um, caps on it. So, yeah. See, did it come through the bottom? No. Oh boy. Okay. Um. See, this one doesn't use the egret like the newer stuff does. Alright, so nothing special there. Let's set you out of the way. Okay, I want to pull the floppy cable out because I want to throw that in the bucket over there. I want to get this board out and I want to check the capacitors on it at the current moment in time. So, let's see. I need my this because this thing is nasty. I have not turned this thing on at all. I'm not going to until I go through it. It's not really wanting to. Got to be careful with these because you'll break the terminals right off. There we go. There. It's very gooey. It's what it is. It's the rubber degrading on the suction cup. And this thing has not been turned on in a while, so I didn't care about discharging the CRT. Yeah, you could see just the degradation of it. It's just bad. Okay, uh, next thing is pull the grounding screw out. That'll fall out if I do that. Okay, so you... And then, what I like to do is I like to put the screw back in so it doesn't put undue stress on the ever aging, ever brittle fine plastic, right? So, okay. Now well, that's been off before because it was already cracked loose. Throw that in the trash. Okay, and then, let's grab you. Well, oh, missing the screw there. Why am I not surprised? Okay. And remember, there's a fan plug back in here we have to unplug. Let's hope this speaker is an open circuit because I don't have any more speakers. Okay, so same 63 ohms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Garbage. Those caps are trash. Hola. Yeah. All right. So we'll set you out of the way for right now. Because you know what we got to do next, don't you? We've got to test the CRT. Because I want to know what shape the picture tube is in. Let's see, do we have any dust bunnies in there? No. This thing wasn't used much. I'm starting to notice a theme here because it's awful clean. The CRT doesn't have any dust on it, hardly at all. There's no build up anywhere, so it's, it, it's hardly been used. So let's go grab the tube tester and see how well this thing is. All right, CRT tester acquired. It just sits in the other room until I need it. Alright, from previously, we figure out, okay, let's, let's see. <laughs> Trying to do this without breaking the tube. It's fun. Okay good enough all right filament set power on 
Okay, that looks good. No shorts. Set gun balance. Let it warm up a little bit. It's still warming up. Emission. Ah, that's actually really good. It's better than the Classic 2. So we're in the middle of the O. Because remember, a new CRT is up here in the D. So that's not that's not bad at all. So let's do a life test. Oh yeah, solid. Yeah, that's solid. So that picture tube is in better shape than the one that's in the Classic 2. So I just got to remember that that one is a good picture tube. So I'm going to let this sit a minute and then we're going to start working on the circuit boards. All right, at least the Macintosh Classic, it's more simplified because there's only two values of capacitors here. We've got 47s all across the board in one one micro, one 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 microfarad. So we have that, um, which I should have everything I need to make that work. There's a little bit of corrosion and crustiness in here that needs cleaned up, but big thing is to look in the Molex connector. I don't see any green or anything like that, so. I think a simple wash down, simple wash and dry and recap should be fine for this board. I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary as far as I can tell. So it's just a shame that I don't have the expansion for memory. So this thing is only going to be a System 6 machine. Um, it's it's fine. It is what it is. I might be able to find one of those. But it's, it's fine. Um, so, okay. Let's get her all cleaned up. Nice and scrub it up, dubbed. All right, while that is drying off, um, I want to check the speaker here real quick. I want to make sure this thing is not open like the last one was. Mm, good. It's fine. Good. So I don't have to mess with this one. All right, so all of those caps have to come off of there. That's going to be a smelly, fun time. Joyous, joyous time. Let's see. <laughs> Figure how to get all these off. I'm not cutting them because that would be very bad. I'm just pulling them. So, 120 volt board, of course, because we're in the US. Alright, so there we got, what in the world, we got two of them. Whoa, that's cool. There's two of them in here. Huh. Oh, that's not pretty. That's going to need a wash. Oh, God. Yeah, this one's clean. That one's not. That is not pretty. No. Mmm. Yeah. 
All right, which one? That's like this middle one leaked the worst. That's bad. That's really bad. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's. I'm probably gonna have to drill that speaker out because, yeah. Checking my phone. All right, I'm gonna have to pull this speaker out because I gotta wash this board. This board has to be washed because I can't have this cap juice everywhere. So I gotta pull the bad caps off and then I gotta wash the board. Oh, I gotta, um, hold on. Oh yeah, this definitely qualifies as disgusting. Um, I took the flyback out because I don't wanna get it wet. I took the transformer out because I don't wanna get it wet. Um, yeah, this thing needs washed like something fierce. This is disgusting. That is so bad. All right, well, time to go wash this guy up. I took the speaker out too so it wouldn't get wet. All right, so what I've done here is I removed the capacitors with the hot air tool, um, but before I did, I removed this because as I was trying to remove that, it was the heat was starting to get to it, so I'm like, you know what? I might as well unsolder that first and then remove the capacitor. So I figured I wanted to throw that in there. So they're all 47s with the exception of this one here, which is a one microfarad. I have all of those on hand and I think they're ceramics still, but in the case of this board, as we've seen time and time again, I've not really had a problem with them. So we're just gonna reuse what we can reuse. All right, well, the logic board is done, so I can get it out of the way. Now we need to focus on this board. Now, I just washed and dried this board, and I used the heat dry method, which melted all the hot glue, and it kind of pulled up everywhere, but that's not a problem. So this is all done, but I forgot about that, and that's a thermoplastic, so that got a little bit scorchinated, but who cares? Um, but perhaps more importantly, we need to clean this guy up. So if you saw from earlier, we have this copper... That's just completely just eaten away and destroyed. So we're going to need to clean all of that up before we can start recapping it. And then we can seal this in place. All right. Just like before, as again, we only did a partial recap because that's all that's really necessary at the moment in time. And I had to, again, double up capacitors like I did before. So we have that. I got the speaker VH bead back down in place. So it's not going anywhere. And then, um, yeah, I got the flyback transformer reinstalled. Uh, I got this resoldered. So really, it's time to put this thing back together and see what happens if we get a chime or if everything blows up in a ball of flames. But I think it's gonna work. All right, motherboard's installed. The only thing left to do now is plug in the power adapter and see what happens. All right, it's either gonna work or blow up. Hey, we've got a chime. Yay, there's another one fixed. Luckily, that one was fairly straightforward. The width is a little off. Ah, it's a little, hmm. Might have to adjust that a little bit, but that's not a big deal. So back here, next to the flyback lead, uh, yeah, don't put your finger in the flyback lead, but there's centering rings right here. Which, this looks a little loose. Let's see. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it a whole lot. Um, but hey, it's working. So really, the next thing is to service the floppy drive. Once again, new eject gear, lubrication, all that fun stuff. So get the floppy drive serviced and get it reinstalled in here. Oh, and we need a hard drive. I wish I had the RAM expansion, but I do not. All right, now that the floppy drive has been serviced, everything's all good now, at least it should be. I've generally not had a problem with these drives. Just the, you know, the eject gear and lubrication, it seems to work fine. Now this appears to be the wrong drive someone shoved an 800k drive in there so i'm gonna have to go 
digging my <laughs> I should have noticed that earlier dang it so I went to pull this drive back out and go look for a 1.4 meg drive but before I do that um yeah my bad we're gonna need a hard drive now unfortunately I don't have any more hard drives they're getting a bit hard to come by but I got a stack of these that don't work I got gloves on for a reason so what I want to do is I'm gonna do two things First, I have to replace these capacitors because they're leaking and they got to be changed. That's problem number one. Problem number two, inside this drive should be a rubber stopper that is part of the head actuator arm. And it's basically a rest so when the actuator swings over, it doesn't slam itself into the, um, you know, the magnet stand so uh that way you know because the rubber turns to goo and it starts to stick but i'll fix that let me get this apart scratch that i switched drives and this one's a 40 which matches this machine anyways um because the one that i just had out even though it was an 80 meg the rubber's underneath the platter so it's a lot more difficult to to do this one i shouldn't have that problem so let's get this apart and <laughs> see if we can fix this one I put this on to keep dust from getting in there uh, while I'm working on this. So, what I'm doing, since I don't know where to get replacement bumpers and stuff like that, well, I have this cheap piece of crap Chinese belt kit that you can get on Amazon, which aren't good for anything because, well, the wow and flutter's off the charts, right? So, I figured what it might be good for is to use them to double up as rubber bands to create this mess here. Because all this really does is prevent the heads from going out of bounds, right? That actually might work. So, uh, I, I got that one done. So now I got to do this one in there, which is still a mess. I'm going to grab my Q-tips and try to clean that up. But I think, I think this method will work. Because it'll protect the head from um, crashing up against... Because here's the thing, without this bumper, see this one goes here. Without that one, this head will come off the platter because it'll move too far over. So that's important. Now, you don't want them too thin for that reason, but you don't want them too thick because then it may not reach that very end track. It'll try and it'll mark it as a bad sector because it can't get over there, right? Same thing with the beginning track. The beginning track is incredibly important because it contains the, the negative cylinders, which tells the controller the drive dri ugh, drive geometry, plus it has the G-list and P-list for the bad sectors and all that stuff. So if it can't read that, it'll just give up trying and it won't identify the drive. So it's going to be a finesse to get it right, but I think this will work. So I cleaned this up with alcohol, that nasty mess is in there, and then the only thing left now is to do this one. So let's... Let's try that and see how it works. So, you're probably asking me, why are you bothering working on something like this when products such as Blue Scuzzy exist to, you know, fix issues like this? Well, that's a pretty good question to ask. But here's the answer to that question. There are machines out there that are worth putting a Blue Scuzzy into. Because, you know, because of the price standpoint, right? So you've got the Macintosh SE30, the Quadra 700, you know, things like that. But then on the flip side, you have machines that are not really worth putting a Blue Scuzzy into. A Macintosh Classic 1 is one of those machines. Um, yeah, you could spend 30 or 40 bucks and throw a Blue Scuzzy in there and be on your way if you want reliability. But because this machine is probably only worth 40 bucks in a functional state it's not worth doing that so you got to choose your battle in my case because i'm sparingly going to use this machine i figured well i might as well try to get the original drive working um whether it works or not i don't know it's possible we're just going to have to go the blue scuzzy route right that's always a possibility but it wouldn't make a very good video if we didn't at least try all right so the little rubber bumpers in there and the replacements down there now that stem pulls out i pulled that stem out to clean it up so it's just pressed in there and there we go so 
There's only a little bit of play. You can kind of see it in here. So this is latched in now, but there's only that much play. Not enough to matter. It's it's hitting the bumper. Now this one, I don't know yet. That one might be too much, but we'll see. So now I just want to get the lid back on and get it plugged into a power brick and see if this thing will pass the self-test. Well, here goes nothing. on and it's not spinning back down we might be okay I don't know I guess we'll find out all right so just like before we're gonna test the floppy drive before we put it all back together now this is a super drive out of my spares the original one is over here right now which I can test that later but I want to make sure that this guy works properly. Maybe. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just slow. No. That is a negative, so that's not going to work. Uh, now I got it plugged into the external plug, so maybe that's why. Uh, we'll just do it this way then. See what that does. Nope. I just heard it do something. See what that does. It's working. Yay, so that is a good sign. So I can go ahead and put this drive back together. So there we go. Everything's good there. Alright, floppy drives in there, hard drives in there. Um well, let's find out if this hard drive's any good and if there's even anything on it. Because I don't know. Oh, no. Come on. Is this drive, besides the rubber, may not even be any good. I don't even know. Nope. That is a negative um however what i can do where is it there it is what i can do is boot system six and see if it'll even amount it because it's not it's not spinning down all the way like these drives normally do because normally they'll spin up and spin down and also, I might be missing a jumper. I don't. I don't honestly know. But we're gonna find out. Nope. So what we're gonna do is run Lido and see if anything shows up. All right. Let's see. Let's see if anything even shows up.
Nope. Well, it's worth a shot. So, unfortunately, it does not work. Um, but hey, it was worth a try. So, now I gotta find out what to do next. First off, I gotta remove this drive. Um, it's possible the head is still stuck. Because there's a little plastic flapper in there that was kind of nasty and I tried to clean it, but... Well, you never know. So, let's pull that thing back apart. All right, so with the lid off, let's see. Yeah, it's working. Hmm. Yeah, then I'm not sure. I might have to check the jumpers and stuff on this thing then. Because that's weird. All right, so I took an extra a layer off the... um bumper because remember there's a bumper here and here this one's only got one layer i put two layers on here well i took one layer off so let's see what happens now i heard it do more this time yeah there we go see there we go so that demonstrates what i said earlier in the video if you have too much rubber over here, it's not going to read the negative track, the negative cylinders, which tells the drive its capacity. That's why it was working. And it's the same thing over here. If if there's too much rubber over here, it won't make it into the landing zone, right? It won't read that last cylinder. It'll cause a problem. But it seems to be working okay now. Um, but more importantly, um, but you don't want to put too little rubber here either because if you do that the heads will run right off the platter and well that's the end of the drive so but it looks like we're functioning now let's see what are we running 6.0.7 classic hey that's a macintosh classic car drive well oh dang there's stuff on here that i've never backed up um yeah there's stuff on here i haven't backed up so we're gonna shut you down um Okay. Yeah, it's working. So this drive, this drive, it matters. You got to get the rubber right. Too too much, and it won't read the negative cylinder, which is over here. Too little, it'll run right off the platter. So there's literally a sweet spot. Landing zone's over here, which is this rubber bumper there. So this one's a little less critical, but it's got to be good. Otherwise, it won't read the last cylinders. Because track zero's out here. And the very end is out here. So it goes from here to here. So, okay. Now, I fingered this drive and powered this drive up many times without the lid and all that. So I don't expect this thing to last. But, you know, in the name of science, we did some experimentation. So, there we go. All good. All right. The drive's installed in there. Very loosely, I might add. And I like that outcome. No errors found. I just... Did a full format and did a verify and everything is good. So I think I can wrap this system up and then get a system six install on this machine because I'm missing the expansion card. So it's not going to run anything more than system six. It is what it is in that regard. But hey, it works. So if this video feels a little bit segmented, it's because it is. So... The next thing we need to do with this Macintosh Classic that we got working is we need to get some expansion memory in here because even though the one megabyte memory on board works okay with System 6, it's extremely limited. So I just recently got a parts lot, which there will be future videos on some of that stuff here soon. In that parts lot, I got this. So it had a battery bombed Macintosh Classic board, but it has this along with it so this is the memory expansion board that i need to try and make this work the way i want to now i got some one megabyte sims from the one of the battery but another battery bombed board that's in that that lot so i figured i will just use these sims and see if it actually works which it should but this 
will give me some memory expansion. Actually, that's not right. Yeah, this thing never had sims in it, so I have to move thy jumper between here and here, but also need to bend you back because it's bent. Alright. Good enough. So, this thing should have its full 4 megabytes of RAM, so I gotta go grab the mouse and power cord and plug it in and make sure it all works. Alright. Power on. No chime. Aw, rip. Sad Mac. So that RAM card's bad. Why, well, hey! Who knows why? It could be these because, I mean, there was never Sims in that socket, so the sockets could be oxidized. So let me move it back into this slot here so it will ignore that. I was kind of hoping it would work off the rip. But, yeah, it's not been too kind. Yeah, that one did. I don't want to reseat those sims. sees one mag. Well then. I think. Yeah. I think we got bad memory. Unless there's something wrong with this slot. Which is entirely possible. So let's see. No. Okay, so we've got a problem with the um, memory module. All right, so we're gonna have to do some troubleshooting with this module. So this video just gets longer. It's great. So in order to fix this, one of those eight chips that are on board is bad. I'm not sure which one is bad. The sad Mac shows, you know, one zero 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 code five, which is one of the address lines, but I don't know which one is bad. So what I'm gonna do is take the bombed board that came with this RAM card and just steal those chips out because they're the same thing, just a different brand. So this is a parts board anyways, so I can just steal off the RAM and place it over here. So that should solve our problem, I hope. Now, this module does have scratches on the bottom here, but I did check it and it's not bad because I have the meter turned on right now. So it's not bad, so that that's not a problem. Um, it's, it's one of these chips, considering if I move the jumper to disable these two, it won't see this at all. So I know this is bad. So I, I don't know which one is bad, but it's bad. So I'm gonna take them all out, junk them, and just move those chips over. Cause I don't have a way to test this type of memory. I don't have like a retro chip tester or anything like that, or I'd test this RAM to figure out exactly which one it is. But I don't have that kind of money right now. So I'm just gonna move the chips over and, well, hope these are good <laughs> because we don't know. We're taking a gamble. All right, so I went ahead and swapped out the RAM ICs here. Those are the ones that were originally on it. So I moved them over to this particular board. So I took these off of my 
battery bombed board so I stole them there and put them in there and I got exactly the same behavior so I decided to pull the logic board out do some quick uh, inspections I did some trace checks between the expansion connector to the main round to the CAS PAL chip to the BBU and everything's fine I'm not I don't, there's no opens or anything like that there's no shorts so I'm not entirely certain yet if the problem is in the logic board or if it's in this RAM expansion connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab out my working classic and we're going to stick this board into the other machine and see what happens. Alright, so here we are. I took this one apart. This is my other one. And once I get that, the, the other one working, this one might go up for adoption. But So I got this one out now I just took it tore it all apart um, this is the original memory card that was in there so now we're gonna take this guy and put you in here and see if it works yep it does it didn't give me the sad Mac it just it's a chime yep it's working fine so indeed we have a logic board problem. Actually, is it going to come up? Yep, it is. So yeah, we have a logic board problem. We need to figure out what's going on with the logic board because that's, that's what it is. It's not the memory card. Now this particular machine here was battery bombed. See, um, you can see the damage in the the chassis and stuff like that but I got lucky with this one because I probably got this 11 12 years ago and the battery leak had just started it was still wet it didn't have enough time to set in corrosion on the logic board or the chassis or anything yet so you could still see it a little bit there but noticed it didn't you know it didn't destroy the machine so I was able to clean up the board just wipe all the crap off the board recap it and it worked fine as you can tell so I got lucky with this one. All right, so now that we know, we've pretty much narrowed it down to this logic board. Um, the next question is, well, what can it be? So now we need to take a look at the RAM's circuitry. Now, luckily, luckily, there was a reverse engineered schematic made available for this particular board. Now, the Bomark stuff is known to have many mistakes and flaws and stuff like that so take the fine details with the grain of salt but the important thing is the overall gist of it right now this particular sheet contain doesn't contain everything but it contains most of what's necessary for the ram now we can safely make an assumption and you know what they say about assumptions but we can safely make an assumption that we can roll out the muxes and the buffers and all that stuff because the base memory is working fine as we saw so and a lot of this is shared with that now if we look at the sad mat code from earlier in the video we had uh, a major code of five which is external address error and it was one zero 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 which is if we do the math and decode it is a 20. so we have a problem with the high order addressing so now we need to take a look at, well, where is the high order addressing in all of this? Where does it go? So if we take a look at the uh, circuit, so we got address 0 to 9, external addressing and all that stuff. So if we take a look at the high order addressing, we basically have two chips responsible for that. We have the CASPAL, which could be bad. It's possible, but... It's kind of hard to believe because it also is connected to the base memory and the base memory works fine. But it's still an, it's still a possibility that it's bad because I have seen bad PALs before. But also at the same time we have this 74LS174. So there could be an issue with this not um, decoding properly and sending the correct address select signals into the CAS PAL. There's that too. So it could be either one of these. But we got to start somewhere, right? This is impossible to get. These you can buy all day long. However, we got both of them on the, the battery bombed parts board. So if we take a look at this board, so those two chips are what I'm suspecting. So chip number one is over here and completely out of the way of everything else. 
So we have one on this board, so we can swap that out. But if we take a look and figure out where the 74 LS174 is, it's right here, UH6, which is what it indicates right here. But take a look what's next to that. This thing is right in the path of getting cap bombed. And But if you look very carefully, it's kind of, uh, even though I cleaned this board, it's still kind of dingy and crappy. So I have a suspicion. I would suspect that chip more than I would that one, right? So I kind of have a feeling that that chip is defective. It's not working properly. At least I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it isn't because that's just kind of like a logical process of d deduction here is that IC has been damaged by the capacitor goo. So we're going to pull this one first and I have one on this board. It's a different brand and it's got similar issues, but I'm hoping it, that one's still good. So... And, you know, this reminds me of the same of the, the UE8s on the SE30s of this particular brand and style always go bad. So, yeah, I want to get this chip out and I want to change it and see if it actually solves my problem. So that's what we're going to do. But I did, I did briefly check the electrical connections between A1920 and 21 and to the CAS PAL and they're all good. So it's not that. Now other traces I don't know yet, but those aren't bad. So it's probably the chip itself. And that, that's what I want to go with. I'm going to swap this guy out and see what happens. Well, there we go. The other chip is installed now. Will it work? Well, nobody knows, but we about to find out. All right, so here we go. Boards reinstalled. Just got the floppy drive and the um, Molex connected for now. So first off, let's try it with base memory. Looks like base memory works fine. No errors anyways. So we're good there. Now, the all important test is to put this guy in. So here we go. I can only pray that it works. <laughs> no, it does not. Same exact error. So we can roll out effectively the LS174 unless the one I put in there is defective. So unfortunately, it's starting to look like our CAS PAL is bad. CAS PAL. All right, well, let's swap that guy out and see what happens. Well, I swapped the CAS pal. So that's in there now. Um, the old one's over there. Oh, I hope this one works because if that doesn't work, then the last thing left, unfortunately, would be that guy right there, the BBU. I've checked all the traces from the CPU to the BBU to the buffers to the RAM to the external memory. All of it's good. There's no broken traces. So what's going on here is clearly a chip failure. But where is the question? Alright, so I just kind of have this, I don't know, tacked in place. And I unplug the hard drive so I don't keep power cycling it. So here we go. Still nothing. Let's see, do I have the same error? Well, that's new behavior. That's new. Didn't have that until I swapped the CAS PAL. So... Is the new CASPAL bad in worse of a case? Or is there a broken trace that I actually missed? Um, huh. That one's kind of got me in a, that one's got me at a loss. I'm going to be honest. Um, yeah. All right. So I swapped the CASPAL back, the one I took off of this board. Because I pulled that one from the battery bombed board. And remember we had the chopped SAD Mac. So I put the original back on and yeah, it went away. So that, these PALs are starting to go bad. So this one's definitely bad. Um, I don't know if that one is bad or not. It might be, which is why I'm getting the error to begin with. So that kind of sucks. I need to find another classic board. 
I almost wonder if I want to start part swapping with a working board and potentially ruin it in the process, because why not? Uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Hmm. So I've already swapped the ROM, which didn't change anything. I didn't figure it would, but I wanted to roll it out. This didn't change anything. So the, the, the PAL did, for sure. But, yeah, I'm kind of concerned now. Because I don't know if the equations have been reverse engineered out of that PAL. Alright, so here's where I'm at. Um, here's the board layout, but before we get to that, I was on the right track with um, this 70, 174 because I started double checking connections again. Remember, our SAD Mac was the A20 bit, which is good right here, but if we follow D3, it goes to Q3, right, which is pin 7. Well, pin 7 goes to pin 4 of the CAS PAL. Well, that's open. I can't, I don't, I'm not getting anything there. So that explains why I'm getting the five code. Now that doesn't explain why I was getting the broken sad Mac with the other CAS pal. So I know that one's bad. It has to be, but this one at least is consistent, right? So here's the board layout of the, um, of the Macintosh classic. Now this is pin seven of the 174, which goes off through a via down to over here and then over here to the PAL. So if we look at those four points, that's right here. So I measure from here to here and it's connected, but from here to here it is not, right? So I flipped the board and I measured it from here to the VIA, which is right, let's see, VIA, blah, 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 right here. It's, it's good, so it's broken it's broken from this point right there so if we take a look this it's this is where it's broken so there's two ways i can approach this i can pull the chip again and run a little piece of wire out and then solder in that way from the vo which will make the chip sit up off the board a little bit which will make it which will also make it fun to solder back down or i can just run a long patch wire between here and here because I can solder it through the via there and then run a patch wire up to here to pin seven which is the path of least resistance I think so I'm just gonna run a patch wire from here to here and let's hope it actually fixes it all right that's all patched up now so let's uh let's go out on another limb without you know falling off the limb this time and killing ourselves and uh actually hope that this fixes our problem i have a feeling it will because now we've got the circuit path completed all the way back down here to pin four all right so here we go will it work or will it blow up hey we've had a we got a oh god we got a chime let's see if we can get the rom to boot Hopefully it does. It's taking a lot longer this time because there's more RAM. Boot from ROM, please. Come on. Maybe. Maybe not. Yep, there we go. Okay. Finally, holy crap. So that's what it was. <laughs> the broken, that line right there, broken. Whoo, wow, talk about a rabbit hole. But hey, it's fixed now. I'm happy about that. I think we can finally wrap up this video and call it done. The machine's all back together now. I just literally booted it off of the floppy disk so there's now a floppy drive that's working properly fine and that's the disk that i formatted and just booted off of it's going to boot from the hard disk right now um and system six is pretty quick on this little machine and i think this would 
this machine is really designed for system six anyways but yeah all the ram is seen everything's working uh short of running diagnostics and stuff like that but anyway so yeah it's all working properly hard drives working floppy drives working everything's working it's all back together so and once again the battery bomb board comes to the rescue uh, just use the chip off of there and well all these other ones didn't have to come off now this one was definitely bad so unfortunately this one did have a bad cas pal but anyways so that's it she's done fully complete and can go get put back up in my collection so until next time guys if you have a comment don't forget to uh, hit the like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And until next time, thank you for watching.